Hey guys, and welcome back to another Ancient Ford tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to switch between different characters in game. So, what we're going to do is we're going to walk up to the character, press E, and we're going to switch characters. So, let me hit play and show you what it's going to look like. So, we can get in. I'm playing as my SWAT character here. If I walk close enough to this other character, it's going to say press E to switch characters. If I press E, we've now switched characters, and I'm now playing as this one instead. We can do everything we want to here. And if I go back, we can switch characters again. And so, this is what we're going to make today works perfectly, so it's a great little mechanic that you sometimes see in games. So we're going to be making this today, so let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what you're going to want to do first is obviously have your two different characters. So all I've done is I've got my SWAT character here, which looks like this, which I made in a previous video, and then I've just also duplicated that to get the normal mannequin back, like so. So I have my two different characters, which will work independently and have their own different codes in them. So this is what I've got, you're going to want to make sure you have that as well. And once you've got those, we're going to want to open them both up. So I've just done that now, so I've got the third person character 1 and SWAT character both opened up here. In one of these, what we're going to do is in the viewport, we're going to add a component and add a sphere collision. Now it doesn't matter which one you do this in first, as we're going to copy it all over. So once you've got the sphere collision in here, you're going to scale it up to the size you want. So essentially if the other character is inside of this sphere, then they're going to be able to switch characters. So if you want the other one to be able to be this distance from this character, then that's fine, have it as that. So I think I'm going to make it a tiny bit bigger and I think that's going to be good for me. So that's the sphere that I've got here, and what we want to do is change the collision settings on it. So if we scroll down on the right down here under collision, we're going to change it from collision presets to be custom, and this is because we don't want this to actually trigger anything else. For example, if you have a door based on a box trigger, we don't want this to set that off as well. We don't want this to be the actual collision, we only want this to be for pawns. So we've got custom, we're going to press ignore at the top so everything is on ignore, and then find pawn and put that as overlap. So with this sphere collision here, we're only going to be checking for another pawn, which is obviously our other character. So once you've done that, we can compile and save that. And what I'm going to do is select that sphere, Control c to copy it, go to my other character and hit Control v to paste it in here. So now I have the sphere in here at the same size and the same collision settings. And then we can compile that and go back to our other character to finish off this code. So if we go over to the event graph, we can right click on our sphere collision in the components list up in the top left. Add event and the component begin overlap. I'll just move that down there. Right click on it again and add event and the component end overlap. Now we have the begin and end overlap events for the sphere collision. Out of other actor, we're going to cast to our other character. And that's because this is what we're checking for. So out of the other actor, we want to see if that character has overlapped it. So for me, I want that to be cast to third person character one. As I'm currently in the SWAT character, I want to cast to my third person character 1 as it's the other blueprint because again we're checking to see if that character overlaps this sphere collision and then we'll do the same for the end overlap as well so cast to the same character there so third person character 1 for me after this on the begin overlap we're going to create a widget so create widget there and we'll create that actual widget in a second but our return value we're going to add to viewport then we'll come out the return value again and get a remove from parent which is going to be connected into the cast off of the end overlap and this is just going to simply tell the player to press E to switch characters putting that on and off screen and again we'll make the widget in a second then if we hold down G and left click we can get a gate the open we can add to viewport the close will be remove from parent and that's like it sounds we're going to open and close the gate so we can then press E if we are close enough to it so then let's press E so I'm going to right click and get an E keyboard event plugging the press into enter there. So if we are close enough to it and we press E, we can switch characters, which will be out the exit of the gate. Now you can use whatever button you like, it doesn't have to be E, and you can create an action mapping as well. So I'll do that to show you because it's slightly more efficient. So we're gonna to go to edit, project settings. Once it loads, we're gonna go down to input down here, open the action mappings, plus action mapping, and I'm gonna name this one switch characters, and I'm gonna change it to be the E key. Again, it's going to be E, F, left click, whatever you like, but I want it to be E. And the benefit of doing action mappings is we can have multiple keys, keys for different consoles, and we can also set up key bindings, which is obviously allowing the player to change which key does what. So we can close that, and let's delete the E key there, right click, and search for switch characters, or whatever you've just named it. Pressed, still going to the enter of that there, like so. So like I say, if we're close enough to it, and we press E, or whatever button you have, we're going to go into this code here. This code here, we want to come out of as third person character 1, or just out of your cast, we want to get a possess node, 
making sure it's spelled like that, and then untick contact sensitive, and then get possessed there under pawn. I'm going to right click and enable contact sensitive again, plugging that into the exit. The in pawn stays as that character, and the target is going to be get player controller like so. And so that is what's going to actually switch the characters. So now we can switch the other character. So what I'm going to do is before I compile, I'm going to actually create that widget. So if I minimize this, right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. I'm going to name this one switch characters widget like so, opening that up straight away. And all I'm going to do in here is just put in some text. So you can do whatever you want in here. Like I say, I'm just going to do some text, anchoring it to the bottom middle, ticking size content, and I'm just going to change the text to be press E to switch characters. And I'll put the size to about 40. And I might give it an outline as well. Again, you can customize this to get it completely how you want, really customizing it to get it to look great for you. And I'm just going to move that into the middle like so. So that is the basic widget which I'm going to have. It's just going to simply say press E to switch characters. So we can compile, save, close that. Back in our character blueprint here in the event graph, we're going to go to class and get that switch characters widget there in the create widget, compile and save that. I might just move this out a little bit like so. And now this will work perfectly going from this character to the other one. However, we also want to be able to go back. So what we can do is we can just select all of this code Control C to copy it, go into the other character, and since we've already put the sphere collision in here, we can go to the event graph and hit Control V to paste this code. And now all we need to do is change the casts, and this will still work the same. So if we delete these casts here, out of other actor, we're going to cast to this is now our other character, which is the SWAT character. So SWAT character. Again, use these for whatever they are for you. So again, I'm casting to this one up here. So then that will obviously go into create widget, put that again down here of other actor for the end overlap going to remove from parent there and then also as swap character in pawn for the possess there and now this should work perfectly for us so if we compile and save this we can minimize and hit play to see if this is working so i'm playing as my swap character here we can do everything we should normally be able to do we go close enough to this character it's going to say press e to switch characters we walk away that's removed from the screen and if we go back again press e we've now switched into this character and we can do everything we want in here. And if we go back, press E, we've switched characters once again. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. If we've done everything we want to do, we've set up a system in which we can walk up to a different character and press the button to switch characters like this, which again, you see in different games, sometimes role-playing games or anything like that. We just walk up, press a button, and it switches characters, which you're going to play as like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.